Hello and welcome to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, proudly presented by Sloan. We're down to the final days of the 2023 season. And that means every game and every inning matters even more. Ball game. Cubs win. What a start to the homestand for the Cubs. With the Cubs currently clinging to a postseason position, they need everything they could get from the offense. The route is on. A barrage of Cubs homers. The veterans on the pitching staff. Six shutout innings for Jamison Tyone. Swang and a miss. Smiley strikes out the side. And even the rookies, who know how to add a little excitement of their own. First big league hit for Alexander Canario. Have a night, kid. Have a night. It's crunch time for these Cubs. And we've got all the action on this week's edition of Let's Play 2, proudly presented by Sloan. In the Cubs' first home game back from the West Coast, Dansby Swanson looked to hype up the crowd with Nico Horner on first base. Drives that one in the air out towards left center field. Solinski back at the track near the wall. Gone! Into the basket and out of here. Dansby Swanson is 21st, and the Cubs lead 2-0. Right, good way to start the homestand after that rough, rough road trip. Dansby on an 0-2 pitch gets a high fastball inside. This ball probably comes down in the outfield grass, but the wind blows it into the basket. Two nothing go. And the dingers in Tuesday's game wouldn't end with Dansby. Say a Suzuki had a huge day on Tuesday. We'll see that later. But he got Wednesday started with another ribeye steak. Line drive to the pole side. Base hit. Left field. They're going to send Bellinger. Throw to the plate. It is too late. Throw back to first. Out at first. They got Suzuki, but they get the run. Line drive, left field, base hit. Bellinger is going to try to score. Here comes the throw by Reynolds. Not in time. The throw to first. Diving back in. And out at first is Suzuki. Bellinger scoring. The Cubs had an explosive bottom of the fifth inning on Wednesday. And Christopher Morrell was the fuse that lit things off. Left field towards the corner and forget it. On the way, out of here. Christopher Morrell, the Cubs get a run back. Line drive, deep left, forget about it. Long gone. A monster home run for Christopher Morrell. If you spin it and leave it in the zone, you're asking for trouble. We'll take more of those anytime, Christopher. With the Cubs in a tough spot on Thursday, Ian Happ and Nico Horner teamed up to keep things within striking distance for the offense. Happ back, back some more, and it's over his head. And the throw coming towards second. They're going to send Reynolds low to the plate. Out there. Oh, my goodness. This lady, I, I, this throw's got to come into the cutoff, man. And Ian throws it towards second base. It turns out to be a break for the Cubs as Horner is able to zip that ball home and get Reynolds. That was the read by the third base coach, Revelo. He saw that throw coming into second base, so he just sent Reynolds home, but great heads up play by Nico. Javier Assad is a real Swiss Army pitcher for this Cubs team. After starting a game on Tuesday, Assad took to the mound again on Saturday in relief of Marcus Stroman. So Assad gets the punch out. Strike three, and the inning is over. Entering down by two, Assad limited the Rockies' opportunities throughout the middle innings and kept things close for the Cubs hitters. Strike three. Oh, couple of bullseyes for Assad in the innings. Javier's going to strike out eight in a row. And when the Cubs rallied to tie it, Assad capped off his fourth scoreless frame with his biggest out of the day. Assad, a huge strikeout, he's fired up. His four shutout innings set the Cubs up for some late inning magic. It's all loaded up for Merriweather. Swing and a miss, struck him out. And Doyle has gone on a slider. Merriweather, here's the side, he's ready. Got him! A strikeout for Merriweather, what a magic act. And the all-important save. Cubs rally from a 3-1 deficit, and lead it here with two outs. Center field, Pete Crow Armstrong back, has it, back it. Cubs win! And now a half game behind the Diamondbacks for the second wild card spot. When Let's Play 2 returns, we'll check out some delightful defense. This is his signature play, isn't it? How many times we've seen him do this? Don't worry, we'll mix in some hitting too. The route is 
Let's Play 2, proudly presented by Sloan, rolls on after this. Welcome back to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. Let's head back to Wednesday's contest, where Dansby Swanson followed up his offensive performance on Tuesday with this defensive gem. Swanson sliding play, wow. This is his signature play, isn't it? Many times we've seen him do this. Just spectacular work by Dansby Swanson. Backhanded by Swanson, throw to second, they get one. What a play. Great play by Dansby Swanson. Jammed on the brakes, made the off-balance throw back to Horner. Has to be headed to another gold glove. Sweet snag there, Swanson. On a night where the Cubs ran riot at Wrigley, Cody Bellinger joined in and blasted one beyond the basket. Bellinger hits one in the air, deep center field. Zawinski goes back, looks up, gone! Cody Bellinger with a three-run home run. The route is on. It is 13-1 Cubs here in the eighth inning. Home run number 26 for Belly. Now Belly gets this ball up in the zone. He hammers it to center. It's a high heater about just a little above the belt, and he doesn't miss it at all. Hits it above the hitting background and straight away center field. And welcome home, Chicago Cub, back to the friendly confine. With only two at-bats in the month of September, Miles Mastroboni was looking to capitalize on his limited opportunities. Line drive, base hit, left field. How about Miles Mastroboni? His last start was July 27th. And since that time, he's had six plate appearances. But all of a sudden, Madrigal gets hurt and you get thrown into a more meaningful situation and a chance to have a, an impact here. And boy, did he have an impact. High fly ball, right field. That's pretty well struck. Palacios, track wall, and he can't make the play. Mastroboli into second. A double for Miles. That's his second hit. Making the most of his opportunity here tonight. But it wasn't the end for Mastroboni. Would he snag a third hit on the day? You betcha. Yeah, as Mastroboni yanks that into the right field corner, Miles on the move and into second. But a good night for Miles Mastroboni. He has three hits. Yeah, I'll say a great night for Miles. Three out of four, a couple of doubles. Just missed a home run last time up. Though the Cubbies lost the game, it's safe to say Mastroboni's first multi at bat game of the month was a success. Seiya Suzuki has been shining in September, and he looked to continue to sparkle in the bottom of the third inning on Tuesday. That one drilled to the air towards left center field on its way out of here. Seiya Suzuki, 5 1, comes, and Seiya stays hot. Seiya Suzuki with home run number 19. Powerful swing of the bat. You see that top hand come through. Big leg kick, foot down in time. This is a no doubter. It's a hanging breaking ball. They want it down and away. It ends up inner half belt high, and that's where those are supposed to land. Somewhere out of the ballpark. Sayers had a red hot September, hitting better than 350. Six home runs and 18 RBIs. Despite trailing by two runs early on Saturday, the Cubs were on the doorstep in the sixth and Jan Gomes continued his clutch September with a game-tying knock. That one drilled out towards left center field, and that'll bounce off the wall, and this game is tied. Jan Gomes into second, huge hit, and it's 3-3. Gomes has been uh, very clutchy this year. Boy, has a big two-out knock. He's had himself a heck of a year, both at the plate and behind the plate. And with the bases loaded in the seventh, it was up to none other than Cody Bellinger. In the air, left field, Jones back. Back some more near the wall, and he makes the catch. Pete Crow Armstrong sprinting home. He will score. It's a sacrifice fly for Cody Bellinger, and the Cubs have the lead. And Christopher Morrell capped off the comeback with a blast in the eighth. In the air, high fly ball out towards left center. That one back. Marimber 25, some insurance, and it's 5-3. Yeah, a little breathing room, Bill. And he's got, what, three of the four longest homers hit this season by a cup. 
With the Cubs offense in need of runs on Thursday, Dansby Swanson delivered a much needed swing of the bat. Line drive, base hit left field. Half is in to score, and they're on the board. Swanson an RBI single, 3-1. Cubs have been 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position prior to that swing of the bat by Dansby Swanson, and maybe that'll get a little something going here. Finally breaking the seal. Now the Cubs were waiting all night long for a big base hit. Big swing of the bat. But you need a couple more big swings is all you need. That wasn't it for Dansby, as he had another big swing scheduled on his agenda. Drill, left center field. That one back on its way. Out of here. Swanson, a two-run homer. Into the bleachers, the Cubs are within two. And still nobody out here in the ninth. They are not going quietly. Dansby Swanson loves to hit the fastball, and that's what he got from Bednar. So RBI single last time, two run home run. This time, the Cubs are blooping a blast away from Thomas Ballgame. He gets right on top of this ball. This ball's squared up big time. Swanson drives this one deep into the bleachers in right center. When Let's Play 2 returns, we'll press play on some prime pitching performances. Strike three, gone on the outside corner. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Let's Play 2, proudly presented by Sloan, will be right back. Welcome back to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. Before the break, we saw Dansby's Day at the Dish, but how about a pitching performance from the same game? Swing and a miss, and Hendricks able to get him. There's two away. A good changeup, and the one we highlight quite often, the one he throws away from right-handed hitters. A very difficult pitch to execute, capable of doing it a high percentage of the time. And you see Hayes, the weight is gone. The 2-2. Swing and a miss, struck him out. On Thursday, Kyle Hendricks took to the hill at home, looking to help keep the Cubs' playoff hopes alive. And Rodriguez is gone on strike to big out number one. I'm wrong. He's out. Two away. Two seamer running back to the outside corner. Well, I love the pitch call. They did not go away with the fastball the entire at bat until the last pitch. And then he threw that two seamer, started away, and came back to the outside corner. The professor has been steady and dependable all season. On the ground is short. Swanson collects. And that's out number three, a couple of unearned runs. And it was more of the same against the Pirates. Bellinger fouled ground near the tarp, and he makes the catch. And a nice, quick, easy inning for Kyle Hendricks. He wasn't perfect, but he kept the Cubs in the game, allowing only three runs, two of them unearned, across six innings. Remember that explosion in the fifth on Wednesday we mentioned? Well, that was courtesy of one of the Cubs' demolition experts, Ian Happ. Happ awaiting a three-long. Bases loaded, one out. High fly ball, right field, way back, out of here! Grand slam, and just like that, it's a two-run game. That's what the Cubs needed. A couple of good at-bats and a big swing to get you back into the ball game and get 35 to 40,000 people back into this game and have delivered. Take your shirt off, Christopher. It's 8-6. On Tuesday, Javier Assad was on the job and he made sure to deliver a great day on the mound. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Good start for Assad. After striking out a pair in the first, Check swing, did he go? Yes, he did, struck him out. Rasad, typically the put away pitch is the slider or the cutter, but here he calls on Uncle Charlie to deliver, and indeed the curveball gets the job done. He'd duplicate his fine work again in the second. Pitch in there for a strike. Assad with four strikeouts in the first two innings. And in the third inning, Assad asserted himself even more. Assad gets the strikeout. In there, got him, no argument from Rivas, back-to-back -back strikeouts. Today, this one starts out well in off the plate and then darts over the inside corner. Rivas knew it, 93 miles an hour, paints that corner inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Struck out the side. Assad would end the day with a strong line of five innings pitched, five hits, one earned run, one walk, 
and eight strikeouts. The swing and a miss, and Hayes down on strikes. And the Pirates go down in order here in the top of the fifth. The pitching performances weren't over in this one, though. Javier handed things off to the Cubs' bullpen, and a bevy of those Bulls locked things down. Awkward swing and a miss at a pitch in the dirt. Gomes fields it. High throw to first just in time. First up, it was Drew Smiley. Oh my goodness. Palacios down on strikes. Swing and a miss. Smiley strikes out the side. He turned things over to Jose Quas. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Who passed the torch to Mark Leiter Jr. Winning the offering from Mark Leiter Jr. See you later. 14 in a row set down by Cub pitching. On the ground to the right side. There's one. There's two. Four, six, three. And Luke Little wrapped up the day in a big way. Little high leg kick and pitch. A swing and a miss and a strikeout to two. Outside corner, Jim Wolf brings him up. And a 2-2. Right there, ball game. Cubs win. The Cubs bullpen kept the treasure buried to help seal the victory against the Buckos. Jared Young is a name we haven't heard too many times on Let's Play 2, but on Friday, he made a splash in a big way. Hammered right field, way back, and see you later. Jared Young unloads deep into the bleachers in right, and it is 5-0. J.Y. crushed one. I'm put a hurt on that baseball. He's only started a few games here in the big leagues and hasn't started in a long time. And he gets the start today with nine games left. It didn't work out early in the game, but boy, he got a pitch to hit in the sidearm righty and hits it in the bleachers. That is a big swing of the bat for the Cubs. My, my, hey, hey. Nice job, Mr. Young. When we come back, we'll take you through the top moments of the past week. Don't worry, we've got plenty. Can you believe what's coming next? Stick around. Let's Play 2, proudly presented by Sloan. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. It was already a week to remember for Seiya Suzuki, but on Friday, he just continued to stay hot. Line drive, base hit left field. Topman in to score. Here comes half to the plate, the throw. And Ian is out. Cubs get on the board. Seiya Suzuki, an RBI single. After Seiya delivered that runner to the plate, he displays some more power later in the game. In the air, left field. That's well struck on his way. Out of here. Seiya Suzuki with the home run. And with number 20, the Cubs now lead 3-0. He's knocked in every run today. A two-out RBI single in the first inning. And now this two-run blast here in the fourth. It is number 20 for Seiya Suzuki. He has been smoking hot since the middle of August. Seiya's day wouldn't end there as he tally another hit for his third of the game. Punch back up the middle, and that is, can I say it, a nice piece of hitting. It was indeed. Punched it up the middle. He's three for three. Talk about a super Seiya performance. Jamison Tyone has had an up-and-down season. But on Friday, he took the mound in a must-win game and delivered one of his finest performances in pinstripes. On a curveball that was actually hanging a little bit. After a strong first inning, he'd nab another K with the curve in the second. In there, got him. Four batters in, we've yet to have a ball in play. A couple of punch outs, a couple of walks, and this time Tyone clips the bottom of the zone, says Dan Isonia. 3-2 on the way. Got him. Two walks, three strikeouts, and the Rockies do not score. In the fourth, he'd get another two batters swinging. Swing and a miss. And Tyone climbs the ladder. You see those, that high strikeout right now. As a pitcher, you're telling yourself, I don't need to throw this guy a strike. A little dessert cart fastball. Doesn't matter. Tyone gets out of it. Tyone kept the Rockies offense scoreless, notching his seventh punch out in the fifth. Inside corner and slider that finds the spot to strike him out. Number seven for a tie on here today. I don't think he wanted to throw that over the inside corner, but sometimes you make a mistake and you get away with it. Tyone would leave the mound after six stellar shutout innings. 
earning the win in one of the biggest games of the year. Out to short should be two. There's one. There's two. Six shutout innings for Jamison Tyone. Alex Canario got his first taste of big league pitching on September 6th. Alexander Canario, nice hand for his major league debut. And the ball gets him. That was a tough task for any debut, but on Tuesday, the Cubs' number 14 prospect would slot in at DH for his first career start and record a couple of other firsts, too. Flipping down over his head. Reynolds, it's off the wall. Morrell sprinting around third. Canario into second. It'll go as an RBI double. First big league hit for Alexander Canario, and it is 6-1. RBI double for Alexander Canario. His first big league hit. And that is a happy young guy out at second base. Excellent job. Really happy for him. He hasn't been playing. Doing a lot of watching, but he hit a line drive over Reynolds head for an easy score for Morrell. Now that'd be a great day for any young ball player, but things for Canario would get even better. Now a chance to do some real damage. Cubs lead it 6-1, looking to blow things open here. After recording his first hit in RBI, he'd get another chance to shine with the bases loaded in the eighth inning. And that one is gone! It's a grand slam! How about it? Alexander Canario will touch them all. He puts one in the bleachers with the bases loaded, and it is 10-1. Have a night, kid. Have a night. First home run in the big leagues, a grand slam here in front of 34,000. 10-1 Cubs. That grand slam made Canario the first player since 1920 to record a grand slam and at least five RBIs in their first career start. That's awesome. That is a happy bench. Obviously, the story of the night, Canario there being there like that, that's pretty awesome. Um, Getting his first hit, home run, big, stretch it out a little bit, allowed us to use the whole bullpen. It was nice to be back home. I think we felt that. A lot of great, you know, turnout for the fans on a Tuesday night. Um, just feel that, and I think that helped the offense, and hopefully we can carry this in. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching Let's Play 2, proudly presented by Sloan. We'll see you next week.